Hey guys, Mtast here, and today I wanted to talk about attack damage, attack values, and the overall damage that you're doing with a weapon. Now before I get into it, I want to lead you towards a guy named Gaijin Hunter. He did a breakdown of the bloat factor on weapons, as well as in the description of his video. So, <laughs> let, me, let me explain this. In the description of my video, I'm going to link you to the first video in a series of videos from Gaijin Hunter. So I'm going to lead you to a video, and in his description, there is an in-depth breakdown of all the other factors that come into play when doing the calculations for a weapon's damage, okay? All the different status effects, everything, okay? So what I want you to do is either before this video or after this video, watch his video and then check out the other ones because they're going to be much more in-depth. But the reason I'm making this video is because I want to enlighten a couple people in my direct audience because a couple of you are confused on how damage works in this game. And I don't blame you because it is messed up, it is complicated, it is kind of stupid in some people's eyes. So let's just get started. A couple of people have commented on my videos saying, why are you using dual blades because the attack value is so low? <sighs> that hurts my heart, guys. That hurts my heart. It's not your fault, but that is, uh, that's messed up because that isn't how it works. If you look at something like this great sword, it has 1,008 attack, right? If you look at something like this axe here in the Nergigante line, same line, it has 700 attack, right? Now, if we look at the charge blade, or sorry, the dual blade, same line, Nergigante line, it only has 294 attack. That does not mean that it's weaker than the greatsword, or the axe, or the charge blade, or anything. This is essentially the uh, bloated attack value on the weapon. So if you were to look at something like a greatsword, there is a bloat factor of 4.8 times the damage. So essentially you would take the damage, divide it by 4.8, and you would get the base kind of true value of attack damage. If you were to take the damage of Decimation's Claws and divide it by 1.4 times, it's only a 0.4 modifier essentially, you would get the base damage of this weapon. Technically, if the ratio or the, the, the final value of the dual blade was higher than the greatsword, you could technically say that the dual blade is a better weapon. But that still doesn't fucking work, because there's a whole bunch of stuff that comes into calculations, such as the motion value. So if you look at something like uh, a dual blade, it's quick, fast slashes, right? It's a lot of unpowerful slashes, if you will. So even if you look at the, let's say it was 200 damage, I think that's the, the number that Gaijin Hunter uses in his video. If, you, if they both had 200 damage... The attack or the, the overall damage numbers that you're going to get on a dual blade are going to be much lower than the greatsword because it's it's quick little stabs, quick little jabs, where the greatsword is some big charge, hulking hits. And so you need to look at this base attack damage as the overall kind of average DPS of the weapon. Even though the dual blades do these small little attacks, they're also much, much faster. So instead of doing one big massive hit, you're going to do five little hits. What I wanted to do with this video is to help you understand that dual blade does not ever equal greatsword. It does not ever equal charge blade. It is never the same as a lance. These numbers are always going to be so different and extremely difficult to calculate that you cannot compare the two. You need to look at the strengths and weaknesses of the weapon before all else. Is it an enemy that is always flying around and annoying? Well, maybe you need a little bit more reach and the dual blades are going to suck, period. Even if it had the best stats on it, dual blades might not be the best pick for that enemy. You also have to think about, are you trying to stun it? Well, maybe the hammer is a better choice for you. Are you trying to cut its tail off? Well, maybe you want to use a combination of the charge blade or maybe you do want to use the dual blades because they're great for cutting tails. Those factors are going to come into play much, much more than the DPS, damage, attack of a weapon. The actual usability of the weapon is much more important. The other thing, too, I guess I wanted to just drill into your head, is, um, you know, these attack values, because they're so misleading, if you have been misled, 
If you have not chosen a weapon because the attack value is lower, I would definitely go revisit a couple ones because you might be missing out on a weapon that is, is a lot more fun for you to use uh, and, and you're going to now be able to pick them up and use them because you're not tricked by this crazy bloated attack value, okay? Um, one more thing to remember, though, is if you're comparing weapons in the same weapon archetype, so dual blade versus dual blade, now you can start making a couple of decisions. So if you look at these two here, this has 294 attack, and this one has 280 attack. That does apply. That means that the top one does technically do more damage, base hits, than the bottom one, right? The Nergigante one, technically, 100%, like there's no denying it, has more attack damage than this one. Because the bloat factor is the same. But other things like the weapon sharpness, uh, the affinity, those are going to come into play. So if I was to make a decision, I would choose the Nergigante one over this one. The, the Basil guys. Basil geese. Because this one has negative affinity, which means 10% of the time I'm going to only do 75% of the damage. It has lower attack damage as well. Um, you know, it doesn't, it has the same decoration slot, slightly less elemental damage. You know, this is a better sharpness. This is overall, for me, a better weapon. But doing the same thing with a charge blade versus a dual blade, you can't really do that. You cannot compare the two because the values are going to be so different in so many ways. So, all in all, what I recommend you do is find a weapon that you enjoy using the most. Maybe Google, what's the best charge blade? What's the best dual blade? Go with that for now, but don't get too bent out of shape just because of the stats on the page, because they don't matter as much as you think. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you soon, my friends. Bye-bye.